every nation has that plan. You, you, if you go to say Tanzania has vision 2025, uh, uh, Ghana has vision 2020. Of course, our brothers in Uganda, Museven is a very wise man. He gave himself vision 2040. <laughs> and I'm not going to add any more from there. The African Union also has a vision 2023. And one of the visions is to make Swahili a national, uh, an African language. Uh, and by the way, all of these things, if you Google them, you can study the different uh, uh, visions that different nations have and are aspiring to walk into. Even politicians have a vision program. There is something called Vision 2022. And every one of them has a program. They have a plan. They have a preferred candidate. Now, what bothers me, by, by the way, Moi, with all the stories about him, was a man who had a vision program. He, he gave you Project Uhuru. And lo and behold, he is the president of what? Of this country. So that tells you that his vision did what? Worked. Mandela called, called just before they, they got into fighting the apartheid movement. He called and hosted young men, 24, 22, 28, young men. And all of them were ready to take arms and go and fight the Boers at the time. This is what Mandela told them. And he says, some of us here will go and fight these people literally. But I, I appeal to you young ones who have brains. Go to school, sneak to Zimbabwe, go to Botswana, go to outside this country, learn the ways of the white people. Because when there will be independence, you are the ones who come back and lead this nation. And men like Thambo Mbeki sneaked out of, out of uh, South Africa, found themselves in, uh, in Britain, eventually even married a white lady, and lo and behold, the vision came to do what? To pass. He took over from Mandela. And we have many examples. Now, what bothers me is the church. The church has no vision statement. The church has no program. Sisi tunazunguka zunguka kwenye kiti chaenzi. There is no, there is no deliberate building. Let me, let me tell you, brother. Jesus is coming back. But he's not coming back as soon as you think. There are too many things that have not been fulfilled. As a result here, my brother, we are here for many more years. If we do not fulfill certain scriptures, his word that has been promised must be fulfilled. And until that word is fulfilled, brother, stop, put both legs down. And begin to understand you must dominate this earth. The church must have a vision program. I mean, for example, I mean, for, we, we must focus and say, in the next 20 years, what kind of marriage are we going to have? What kind of youth are we going to have? Because these musicians may be young, but 5, 10 years down the road, they are going to be the pastors. They are going to be the business people. We must now begin to ask ourselves, what program do we need to do? What do we need to add to prepare them for where God wants to take them to be? Because remember, chance only comes to a prepared, prepared people. Now, 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 the world of business is very interesting, and especially for the believer. There is a distinction between a Christian business and a kingdom business. There is a big difference between a Christian business and a kingdom business. Remember the mandate of Christ is go to the kingdom. Go and preach the gospel of the kingdom. And so we must begin to break away from the church business realm to the kingdom business realm. Now, let me quickly break this down. When we talk about a kingdom business, or, a, or a, let me use the word, a church business, a church business, and you can measure yourself, is ordinarily triggered by selfishness. I want to buy a car. I want to own a house. I want to have money. That is called a church business. <laughs> And that kind of a mindset cannot fulfill the mandate and the plan of God. Our inspiration is external. The car you drive, the house you drive, the suit you dress. And by the way, this material mindset was brought to us from America that defined wealth. In fact, we called it the prosperity gospel. And it, it externalized and trivialized wealth 
to a very shallow place in material form. How do we refer to a man of faith? By the car he drove. By the church size. By the house size. That is how we say it. This one is a woman of faith. But please, let me, let me, please, we need to go. Give me Hebrews 11. I just want to correct this and then I go to what I want to share. Hebrews 11 verse 35. You will notice that what we have called faith. <laughs> women received their dead raised verse 35, to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Let's move on to 36. Still others had a trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment, verse 37. They were stoned, they were sworn in two, they were tempted, they were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins, God's kings. They were destitute, afflicted, tormented. Let's move on. Of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. The last verse, verse 39. And all this having obtained a good, a good report or a good testimony through faith. In other words, they didn't have cars. They didn't have big houses. <laughs> but they obtained a good report because they stood whatever experience they stood by faith. <laughs> and, and it's important that we must balance this message of faith. The fact that you, your life is going through a negative does not mean you don't have faith. In fact, it shows us that you are still standing. You are truly a man of great faith. You have not given up. You have not committed suicide. You have not walked naked. You are still being the Bible says, did not they did not receive the promise, but you have still stood, you are still born again. You are a great man of faith, and we must correct because faith is to please God, not to get cars. The cars are these other things that are added unto us. Faith is to get you to salvation, faith is to keep you in salvation, faith is to please God, and we must correct this. Now, a few parameters that I just want to share, and maybe I'll capture this in the evening. The first parameter, and one of my mandates, is to awaken the spirit of entrepreneurship. God has given me a mandate to awaken the spirit of entrepreneurship. <laughs> now, remember, we want to establish kingdom businesses. And there's a total difference. Now let me go to the church. What is a church business? A church business, number one, is those businesses that call themselves Ebenezer Agency. Sharma Enterprise. Gilead International. Shalom Properties. And it employs between three to six people. And they think they're very big. By the way, they consume a lot of anointing oil. They pour a lot of oil in the business. You know, <laughs> it's almost bordering to witchcraft, but let me not go there. And they begin their morning by holding hands and praying. And I have no problem with all that. But there's another level. Then we have what is called kingdom business. Kingdom business are called, and you notice the word emphasis, called into existence by the will and the prophetic purpose of God. They are called into existence by the will and the prophetic purpose of God. And there are people who are doing church business who are actually called, but they have not realized that mandate and they need to enter in these two sessions to that kingdom mandate. Number two, they are governed by principles of the kingdom of God. They are governed by the principles of God. Now, because I recognize not all of us are in business, I also need to emphasize something. Not everybody will do business. We need, we, we have people like Daniel, Joseph, and the others, Esther, they made in Amma's house who did not do business, but they still fulfilled their kingdom mandate. So some of us are employed. So I'm, I'm going to use, so they are what you call servants and they are kingdom servants. Or civil servants and kingdom civil 
servants. And, 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 and briefly, now, now, what are called servants? These are those who, <laughs> they carry the Bible to work. They're called servants. They, in the office, they're spooky. They even have a badge here, God's army. Jesus is Lord. During boss time, Babylon time, when they have no client, they remove their Bible to study scripture. Stealing. No wonder when there is a promotion, who is given promotion? Is somebody else. Because when every time the boss comes to you, you, are, you, you don't express seriousness. And you are blaming God that you are not possessing the gates. But the problem is that you need to understand Babylon has rules. Every Monday morning, you are always having an excuse because you had cashed. In fact, Mondays and Saturdays are some of your worst days because you have cashed, you, you are sleeping in the office, you are dozing because you have not understood the dynamics of managing your spirituality. Because you think that spirituality will impress your boss. Babylon is not bothered by how, how many cashes you went to. Babylon is, is impressed by the production you produce in that office. That's what will make you go to the next level. Hallelujah. And when somebody comes to your office, finish as if you and you think you're impressing the boss. In fact, the boss thinks this is a very, I mean, Babylon has a language. Man of God, is there any harm if I say good morning, sir? It doesn't mean I'm not saved and I'm not going to heaven. Because you need to understand, in certain environments, there is a language that they use. <laughs> in fact, by just being polite, you are a poor misrepresentation of Christ. And that is where promotions have eluded you. While God ordained you to be the leader of that office. But you have not represented Christ in the right way. Now, on the other hand, we have, we have kingdom servants. They, now, let me give you kingdom servants. They have an overriding objective. They have an overriding objective. To, and determination to build successful careers. And determination to build successful careers. By applying kingdom principles. In terms of time, and time will not allow us to look at Daniel in, the, in totality. But in terms of time, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego were outstanding. They were great men of God. They were outstanding in, in times of, they were not always asking for offs. When it came to hard work, they worked as harder. They were ten times wiser. Those are the qualities that any boss will pay millions to sustain. I have a young man who have taught some of these things. Right now, he's just been employed. He, 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 he hustled. In fact, I remember one time he came to my house and he removed his shoes in my carpet. And God forbid, the environment was slain in another atmosphere. By the time we said goodbye, I had to call the young man to go and, and find a shoe on my shoe rack that could fit his feet. And he chose a very expensive shoe. I made that mistake. <laughs> but, <laughs> but up to this day, he remembers and says, Pastor Ken, you're the only man of God who told me to choose a shoe. I gave him a very expensive shoe. And he was so happy. And he, right, and he, he, he hustled working for an Indian. And then he, he took himself to college. He hustled here in Nairobi, staying in some dingy place. And eventually he did some IT course. Eventually he got a job in the IT department in Safaricom. And then the story has not ended. From there, I've always told him, there is always another level. Remember that. In God, there is always. And he also continued doing his, his degree. And he, he eventually has now a master's. And in Safaricom, in Safaricom, he applied to go to Amazon. And Amazon called him to work in Australia. He's been in Australia for three years. And when Safaricom was releasing him, they wrote a letter, which he showed me, and they said they were grooming him among the few who will in future become the Kenyan Bob Colimos. Because Safaricom is having that program that they must have, we cannot keep having Bob Colimos and Michael Josephs. There must be Kenyans who run Safaricom. And that's a recommendation they gave him as he went to Australia. Now, 
January, he's now begun a bigger job with a bigger company in Washington, D.C. In fact, in May, when I'm flying to America, I am guaranteed of a, of, of a, of a place to stay. Because, and the boy is 28 years old. Atahana, Bibi. In fact, now we are praying because it's a serious crisis now. <laughs> if we are going to be kingdom servants, our work ethic must be higher. This young man would go six, seven o'clock, I mean, late in the night, working to make sure the impressor things are working. I mean, when he's called in the night, he's not complaining. He would do because, and that's where, let me tell you something, hard work is rewarded. I know the church wants to hear prayer is rewarded. Kingdom servants work. <laughs> Time will not allow me. <laughs> and maybe I'll just deal a little. <laughs> a, a little let, me, let me just speak Daniel. And, uh, we need more time. But let me just look at Daniel. Let me give a, a brief background. Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. Nebuchadnezzar wants to build the biggest kingdom on the face of the earth. And he actually achieved it. Because he's a head of gold. If you go to Daniel chapter 2. He's the biggest kingdom that ever lived. And he achieved this by using the church. Let me tell you. America is America because of the church. Any nation that exalts the church prospers. Google these things. And that is why we must possess the gate. And to possess the gate, our worth ethic must go higher. Because promotions are there. Listen to me, my sister. Promotions are where? But there is an attraction you must have. So what Nebuchadnezzar does, he is expanding his kingdom. And, and it was also the will of God. By the way, even the way we are, God has allowed some of us to be where we are for a divine purpose. In fact, Jeremiah tells the children of Israel, when, when this man comes to attack you, don't resist. Accept to be taken in because it is planned. God is planning 70 years. And then he tells them, when you go to Babylon, marry, give in marriage, occupy, build, because there you stay for a long. Then there is another prophet that we like hearing. What was his name? Is it Ananiah? I can't remember his name. Eh? Hananiah. And even in Kenya, still there. Who tells them, when you go there, occupy singing, go for Keshas, keep praying, Maranatha. Come quickly. Don't get engaged with business. Don't marry. Go and fast. Go to Cataloni. Because you, he is soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. But this prophet, Jeremiah, tells them, when you go there, Stay there. Do business. Because there you're going to stay for 70? 70 years. So Nebuchadnezzar has a strategy of improving the quality of personnel. He takes the children of Israel and takes them to jail. I mean to as slaves to work for him. But he chooses royal sons. It is said there were about 400. Because if you go to uh, the palace, the king who has sisters, who has brothers, and they have children. So they took their sons, and it, they say it's about 400 young men were taken in, into the palace of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, there, there is three things that they did. So Nebuchadnezzar tells them, number one, they must undergo at three years, and you can study this in Daniel chapter one. Next time when we come, we'll go a little deeper in this. Three things Nebuchadnezzar required. They will go for three years rigorous training course to indoctrinate them. Three years. How long does it take you to get a degree? Yeah, another three years. Eh? So they go through a rigorous three-year process. And the issue is that if you don't pass, you go back to be a slave. But if you succeed, you work in the pa palace of the king. And many of you are slaves because you refuse to work hard to do it. Remember, Nebuchadnezzar at the end of the three years sat down as they did the exams. Babylon will judge you. Second thing, to facilitate the process, the Bible says he makes, he tells them they must be given a special diet. A diet that will make it easier for them to transition to becoming effective. And this is, this is, another, this is a very serious point. Babylon will corrupt you. Babylon will rob you of your faith. 
Bible says, having a form of godliness. Do you know how many Christians who are singers began in the church? Now it's something else. You, you know, I can name names, you know. <laughs> but because of Facebook Live, I'll, I'll, I'll avoid such. You know, that we have certain singers, you don't know, are they in church or not in church? We have celebs who began in the church. I know some of them, even who are worship leaders. But today you're not. Because Babylon, and trust me, they still come back. But Babylon, well, they will feed your diet. If you don't know, if there's something Daniel refused, is to feed that diet. And that's another topic for another day. The third thing, <laughs> he says, they must learn the language of the Chaldeans. They must speak. This one Daniel agreed. Because Babylon doesn't understand Buenesha's view. <laughs> Babylon understand. Good morning. How are you, sir? Thank you. Are we, are we together? But this one, Daniel agreed. Because Daniel understood, for me to work in this government, there are certain languages I must know. <laughs> Don't worry. Another day we'll deal with this. <laughs> the, 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 then he gives them uh, a mentor by the name of Ashpenaz, who was like a father figure whose role was to disciple them. And Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego developed such a chemistry with this, young man, with this old man and, and he gave them leverage not to eat and to compromise their faith but because they first exhibited excellence. Daniel is the only man in the history of civilization that ruled, remained in power for four different kings. Those who are in power in Uhuru's days are not in power today. Those who are in power in the days of Moi are not in power where? Today. In fact, the only one who survived is Wako, who did two governments. But ordinarily, those who are in power today, trust me, you will not hear of them again. They are making noise. Just give them how many years? Even, do you know when Nebuchadnezzar became an animal, who ran the government? His brother Daniel. <laughs> but you must show excellence. You must show character. You must have ethics. Because that's what we are lacking. It's not that we don't have opportunities. But we have lacked eth ethics and character to bring us to the place of influence. That's how we possess gates. Second mandate. We must break the narrow religious concept of church business. There is a religious concept of church business that many of us operate in. Let me read for you Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 8. Quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 8. It says, all of this, let me quote this version. All of this is a land which I, the Lord, promised to give you and to your descendants. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And to their descendants, he says, go and occupy it. Go and occupy. Where you are, listen to me. It is where God is saying, go and occupy. Psalms 1, uh, 115. New King James now. Psalms 115 verse 16. Psalms 115 verse 16. He says, the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given. To who? So why are you worried about going to heaven? Heaven is your home. No child in his natural mind, when, he, when, he, when school is about to end, begins singing, I am going home. They just go home. But the Christians keep singing about going to heaven. Because our, our possession is where? The earth. When God bless Abraham, what did God tell Abraham? Your descendants shall occupy the earth. Idunia, possessing the gates, is possessing this earth. Having dominion in this earth. Let us focus on coming up with strategies to dominate this earth. Now let me give you one very important key. If there is a place that will transform the earth, is the marketplace, not the church. Let me repeat that again. 
the place that is going to transform the earth with the message of God's kingdom is the, the earth and not the church. In fact, when Christ was launching the church, he, you know, our focus is walete kanisani. That has been our focus. But Christ says, go ye to all. So here, you only come to be fired up, to be re-energized, to receive impartation. But your mandate is not here. Your mandate is in your office. Your mandate is in your business. Go to all the earth. And emphasis is all. <laughs> and our, uh, time will not allow me. There is no saved business. There is no saved business. Business is just Babylon. Uh, please. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I need time to deal with this thing. Because, you know, Kunawato and Asemanga, I'd rather just be a teacher. Because a teacher, teachers are some of the biggest liars. You cheat children that, that uh, what's this guy called? Uh, Thompson Falls discovered Kirurumo Nyaururu. Watch a wogo. We were there. We swam there. How do you tell us? Uh, David Livingstone. Is it David Livingstone in Ginger? Uh, you are some of the biggest liars. In fact, you, are, you need to repent. We, we, we have trivialized things. What we have lacked is how to do the business in a kingdom way. <laughs> how to do some businesses in a kingdom. L let me give the matatu industry, for example. And, and, and now you're making me run ahead of myself. But the matatu industry is supposedly the most corrupt industry. The problem you have, you want to buy one kanisan or one kabas and put it on the road. You can't fight the system. In fact, as I teach this, uh, the, the, the title that I, I flow into is called Working the System. Now, if you, if you are a driver on the road, you'll observe certain buses are never stopped. Easy coach, modern course. You know why? Because easy coach tells the driver, don't waste time with the police. Take the... If they say your tire is old, take it. Let them fine you. Pay the bond. Let the car go. Continue with your journey. They send their lawyer to go to court. So the driver does not waste time. <laughs> and traffic policemen don't want to come to court because the case will take three years. And every day they'll have to, every week they'll have to go for mention, mention, mention. <laughs> so when they see easy coach, wanafanyanga nini? <laughs> are you getting the mystery? Because these guys are working the system to their advantage. Your problem is that we're not going to matatu kamoja. So what you need to do is get ten matatu brothers, create your own consortium, have your own lawyer. That when they arrest your matatus, you know how to deal with the system. Police wa kiona ata to Ebenezer transporters. Ah, how 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 ni wachoyo? Am I communicating? <laughs> So the mystery is how to work the system. This is what Daniel understood. This is what Esther understood. Esther twisted the king like this. This is what the maid, like a tiny little maid in Amma's house, she understood her kingdom position. And she tells the lady, Ambia mze. Ukoma, itaenda. There is a man. She understood how to work the system. The king's, your boss's heart is in the hands of your God. If you know how to work the system, he'll be buying and asking you, Susan, how do we solve the problem? Because you know, you have the wisdom. But because you don't know, and that is why we need to have these teachings on possessing the gates. You know, <laughs> you, know you know, Jesus was so, goodness, Jesus, I, I close at two, <laughs> eh? <laughs> Three minutes. Jesus was so amazing and will come up in the evening. Please, you need to come in the evening. Jesus was so wise that when he wanted to preach to the tax collectors, he aims for one Zacchaeus. And then he says, Tegeneza kapati, ita marafiki wako. You know, we have to be smart. We must know how to work the system. Paul was himself a tent maker. And he partners with this couple called Priscilla and Aquila. 
in Corinth. And when business ikafunga, they moved from Corinth and they went to Ephesus. And that is how they formed one of the most powerful churches in the gospel, the church of Ephesus. And who was Priscilla and Aquila preaching to? Fellow, tent, makers. Jesus wanted to reach the prostitutes. And how did he do it? He just takes one prostitute. And from there, he affects the whole prostitute world. We must know how to work the system. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> our problem, and I have to close. I'm, I'm not finished. I'm just... <laughs> our problem is that you're ignorant on how to work your system to your advantage and the advantage of the kingdom of God. Come on, let's rise up on our feet.